I, hey everyone, thanks for jumping on. We finally were able to figure out technology and make it work. Uh, so this is my friend, Rebecca Murray. She's the founder of Virginia Dare Dress Company, which is my ultimate favorite, favorite <laughs> dress company like in the world ever. So Rebecca, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you, Katie. I am super new to like Facebook Lives and stuff, but I love this. I love you and your business and just like, um, yeah, the way that you have your creations like so uniquely made. Um, so just getting to talk with other fellow minded um, creatives is just so exciting. So thank I'm you for so having me. I'm so happy. I absolutely like have adored you. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. I was so honored when you emailed to do this. I'm like, wow. Yay. So, uh, really quick, because I, I literally like every other post of mine is me wearing one of your dresses, but for anyone who doesn't know about Virginia Dare Dress Company, can you yes. explain a little bit like how you got started? Cause you did not start out as a fashion designer. For this thing. Um, I was the girl all through high school who was wearing like guys clothes and duct tape and like the most, you know, grungy like punk stuff. So the fact that I now am a fashion designer of like a very elegant women's dress company is the most ironic thing in the world. To me. That's amazing. I've never, I've always been like the least well-dressed person in any group. So I did not come at it from like a fashion perspective at all. Um, quite the opposite. For me, it was more about like, I love to do things. I love to, you know, to work hard and to travel and to have dinner parties or picnics. Like I, I love to do things with people. And I, although like often felt though that um, like my clothes, like I would spend so much time like buying the wrong clothes that I didn't feel good in, not knowing how to put outfits together. Um, just like feeling like, like almost like a lack of confidence because of what I was wearing. And I'm a very like practical person. So I don't mind wearing like the same thing over and over and over or buying it like in every color that exists if I know like it works. Um, and I'm also really tall. So I'm actually six feet tall. So finding dresses that weren't like mini skirts all the time was also a real challenge. Um, and then finally, it just seems like clothes are so cheaply made that after a few washes, a lot of things, it's like, you know, Russian roulette, like, is this shirt going to shrink up four sizes if I put it in the washing machine? Um, so it more came about like the direction of like, I just want clothes that are like really practical, but really, really feminine. Thankfully, I grew out of like my grungy tomboy phase eventually. And I got more into like really loving more feminine things, but not like super super girly and to me there's a difference i don't know if it makes sense to other people but there's kind of a difference between like looking fun oh, yeah. and beautiful but not like prissy and girly and like covered in like bows and ruffles um like some of that's great but not like to the point where you couldn't like you know throw off your shoes and like you know go to a picnic in the middle of the woods and do something that's like a little bit more like spontaneous adventurous. Yeah. and adventurous exactly so for me it was be kind of those thoughts in my mind but i was working as a wedding photographer and then more like as a destination wedding photographer, which was absolute dream come true, getting to travel and shoot weddings like all over the world. And I, that was never a part of like what I thought my life could include. And that kind of season, um, kind of coupled with like a really, really, really awful breakup was kind of like a, let me try something beyond just doing wedding photography. Um, and wanting to have like dresses that I could like pack with me, like on a, like a trip somewhere, either for work and shooting a wedding or just like you know, a trip just because. And so it all kind of came together as I want clothes that I can take with me on trips, that I can wear for work, that I can feel really confident in, that I can feel feminine in, and that won't like fall apart after, you know, a few times in the wash. And that was the thought that eventually one day was like, well, what if you started a clothing company? And then I Googled, how do you start a clothing company? And then about like three years of Googling later, um, I launched it on Kickstarter and that's how we came to be. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. We are such kindred spirits truly because I do not like any sort of like, like feminine for me, like growing up, I, I have five younger brothers and a sister on either end. And so for my sisters, girly was all about pink and flowers and tea parties and tutus and sparkles. And I'm just like, Ugh. <laughs> It's not my thing, but, but you're right. Like wanting to have a dress that, that is practical, like 
practical is my love language, I swear. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> So something that's practical that is feminine enough that I feel confident as a woman yes, uh -huh. and able to express that not in like, I have to wear pink. Right. Right. I'm sorry. Pink kind of like makes me want to like gag a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do pink. Like, so I love also that it took you, you, you just Googled, how do I start a clothing company? Yes. Literally. I mean, what did we do before Google? It's so amazing. I, yeah. But then there's the beauty of it is there's so much education online from blog posts or online courses or YouTube. I mean, I, I think I Googled like, how do you start a fashion business? And literally one of the first things that popped up was this like online coaching program to help people who had no idea what they were doing, start an, like start an online clothing company, like from home without going to fashion school. So it's amazing. Like what resources there are. If you like, if people want to try something like I didn't really go to college. I, and I was homeschooled. So I was already kind of in the mindset of like, if you want to learn something, like go get a book from the library and like learn it. So I really like love that mindset of like, if you want to learn something, it takes like some time and like discipline, but like you can learn anything you want really just from like going to Google and like how to make, you know, chain mail armor or how to like make candles or how to make like leather wallets. Like you can learn so much. And I just love that like independence you can get of Like if you want to try something and run after it, like what's stopping you? Just do it. Just Google it. <laughs> Just Google it and figure it out. I mean, that that is legit. I when I had the concept for this, my, yeah. my wrist wallets, I literally went to like as soon as we got off the plane, because I came up with the idea on a plane. That's a whole nother story. And I literally was like, okay, how do I where do I find leather and how do I stitch it? Because yeah. I knew I wanted it to be leather. And I literally Googled my way through how to put these together. <laughs> amazing yeah I love that and then you can kind of be like self-directed too because you'll like find things online you'll be like oh I didn't think we could even like include that or do that and it kind of like leads you down all these little rabbit trails of education and it's so mm -hmm. so easy and along that path you can find mentors too because I did find I went to my leather store my very first time I showed up and I'm like okay here's my designs how do I do this and this one guy his name's Dennis he literally helped teach me everything I know and like has that been that mentor the, through the whole process because you so i mean google doesn't answer everything you do need like just that even people if one person who can just be further down the road and care enough um i know i had that too it's just it makes all the difference for sure i love it I love it's so thing. amazing so you have going back to dresses yeah because i absolutely love love, love, love all of these dresses. Um, can you describe a little bit, like you have a lot of different dresses. You have like what I'm wearing is, would you consider like the Emma to be like more of like a, a basic versus like the Kate? Yes. Like describe the dresses a little bit. Yes. Um, great question. So the, the, we're kind of split between um, wrap dresses and knit dresses. So the dress you're wearing and the top I'm wearing are from this fabric. It feels like yoga pants. It's called a four-way stretch. So you know like some stretchy shirts or dresses are like so thin they kind of like they're not very forgiving because like they kind of are really clingy and it's more of a jersey knit. This is like a ponty knit so it's really dense um, so it doesn't show lines really, doesn't really wrinkle and that's such a good like fabric for um, for traveling, for like, it's just, it's so comfortable and it kind of like, it's almost like Spanx slash leggings, but as like a comfortable dress. So that's it's like, so the Emma dresses are in a few colors and then there's also it in a top and that's like one kind of big section of the collection and the rest um, are I think um, five maybe um, wrap dresses, which are different fabrics, different colors, different variations of sleeve and detail and like mm -hmm. skirt, but wrap dresses, which are really great because they're um, super transitional. So for people, especially like young moms who are like, these dresses can go from like pregnancy, like through like having your bump to even like being nursing friendly afterwards. And then also like for when you're not either pregnant or nursing. So they're really transitional, um, which is a good fit for people who don't wanna like spend a lot on maternity clothes, but need things to feel pretty in at that time. And then also they're just really versatile for like different bus sizes and they just feel so elegant to wear because they're kind of more sushi and lightweight and flowy. So and they spin, are, they twirl. And they're all like pretty easy to care for. So that's another big thing for me is along the lines of practicality, like 
Some of them have a little silk in them, so hand wash is better, but none of them are dry clean only because it just doesn't fit in with like kind of my normal life. So wrap dresses and the knit dresses. Um, in future collections, I do want to expand out into like a skirt and more tops and maxi dresses, like just like more, more of all the pieces that people like us like to wear, but dresses especially more, it's like a fit and flare style is where it's kind of like a, you know, 1950s inspired look where it's a fitted waist and then a really full skirt, which is just such a really classic feminine silhouette. And they all hit about knee length. So it's like that classic, just, I just think it's a really flattering proportions and really flattering shape for all women. Um, but in the future, I'll probably do like some sleeveless or some that are like more of a straight skirt and so some variety, but the fit and flare is kind of like my favorite um, fit. It's really good, especially for people who have like carry weight more like in their hips or their like bottom. It's just, it's like a really flattering, um, really forgiving, flattering um, dress shape. Yeah, I have a very athletic frame like my mom my mom I was also homeschooled my mom used to make um clothes for us uh -huh. and she like I, I to this day I remember I was probably like seven and she's trying to make like a dress for me and she got so frustrated because she couldn't find me where my waist was <laughs> like I had to like bend over and she had to like put her hand there to figure out where my waist was because I'm so straight so like for me I adore the Emma dress because it does help give me a little bit more shape yeah. And, and it is, and that style suits the best too, which is important. Yeah. But I think that's like the more, like, I just feel like it's a more of a, it's the least like girly dress. Cause some of them are a bit more girly, but that the Emma dress I think is just the easiest to wear for people who aren't like frilly people because it says like, as you know, streamlined and like, it just, it's, it's interesting to see how different personalities respond to and like wear different styles. Like when I'll meet someone, I can try to like figure out like, you're, you're, if they'll come to like try on dresses, I'll be like, no, I think you're actually this type because, because of this and because of this, because some of the dresses will have like the skirt sticks out more and that's not for everyone. Um, and some like it's more of a, so it's interesting to um, kind of see how personalities and dress shapes relate because they really do. That's amazing. So kind of on that, uh, that same vein of thought or frame of thought, whatever. Um, <laughs> Uh, can you like give some styling, um, either not necessarily like styling suggestions, but like how does someone take a dress and be able to transform that to reflect their own personality? Because I feel like a lot of times, it's like I live in Colorado, and so people out here rarely wear dresses. It's really interesting. Um, but just for some people, you know, you think dresses is like, oh, that's really girly, but like I'm not girly. At, at all <laughs> not really so what are some ways that people can help like or what are ways that you've seen for people to be able to make these dresses reflect more of their personality oh that's amazing so the biggest help for this has been getting just to literally see how people wear their dresses and I'm constantly mm -hmm. just like amazed at what people come up with for their own styling like I'm not a very um it's just not one of my strengths to like be super fashionable and know like how to layer things and put outfits together. I just, I'm a very simple person. So it's been wonderful just to see even as people like will tag the company on Instagram so much that I've added like specific dress hashtags, to be able to search like each dress style all at once and be able to see oh. how people are wearing them because it's incredible how many ways people come up with like just making it their own. So I've kind of, I try to break it down to like a few like, main groups of like things you can add to a piece like you don't need to add a lot but mm -hmm. um I think it depends on like how how on the spectrum you want to be from like casual to dressy because you can go from like you know cute white tennis shoes and like a denim jacket to like tights and heels and like a fancier necklace so you can take the same dress so many different ways that way so it's how casual or formal and then you know, the season. So do you want to pair it with like tights and boots or like sandals? All the dresses do work with like either, you know, heels, tights and boots or sandals. So they're pretty transitional seasonally. Um, and once you have an idea of like how dressy you want to be, I would say like, look at the belts you have, the mm -hmm. scarves, the jewelry, especially like necklaces or bigger, you know, um, necklaces or even like silk scarves. Some people wear them really well with like a little pop something there. Um, so like jewelry, scarves, um, a belt, 
and then um, like even hair accessories and makeup. So even if you just picked one of those things, you could do like a plain dress with sandals, but like a really like fun, like bright, you know, shocking pink or red lipstick. And that's like the thing. Or you could do the simple dress with like more of a statement belt or with like one necklace or with even like just adding one thing and make like the dress, like the canvas, like the backdrop. And then choose like one thing to highlight and make like the hero. So it could be a really fun like hair, like scarf or, you know, scrunchy thing. Um, but not to be overwhelmed and think you have to like put all these different layers together. Um, just like pick one thing. And so I've even like taken a dress and like looked at my entire closet and be like, could I wear it with this? Like, oh yes, actually I could. Like cardigans are a great thing too. Cardigans yeah. or having um, like one go-to crop jacket, like a denim jacket a leather jacket, or I have this like cropped linen jacket. Um, and when I say cropped is that, so a lot of the dresses have like a, that natural waist, um, you know, I think it's like right wherever, like right below your rib cage. And having some kind of cardigan or jacket that is a little cropped also is so flattering because most, um, like most, a lot of sweaters that you'll find hit more around your hips. And if you have a dress that has a fuller skirt, but a tight waist, you actually don't want to have a sweater that hits too low because it kind of covers up like your thinner waist shape wet. and it more like ends like right at the widest part of the skirt. So I found really helpful as like a go-to like formula for a good um, outfit, especially when it's a little cooler out is finding just a kind of a a crop jacket that would end a little higher so you have like the proportions of the over layer whether it's a cardigan or a leather jacket kind of a little shorter just to help keep that shape of the dress and then I find that you do that and it's done like that and lipstick or that and a necklace and like it's just kind of it feels like a really complete um, look to me but then I'm just amazed at how many different ways people have of styling these dresses I feel like it's just so that people are so creative and I have so much to learn from the different ways they find to wear them. I love it. I definitely need to go out and get a cropped leather jacket like right now. <laughs> and you can do black or brown because mm -hmm. I've even seen some pretty like some places will have like more of a taupe color. Like you can even find a lot of variety of that. And even if you just get one, it's amazing how many different ways you'll be able to wear that with your skirts or dress. I love it. Dresses. I think it's, and I like the dress with a leather jacket combination. I mean, I love leather, so that's like perfect. That's like my love language. A perfect fit, yes. Yes. So one thing that we met, you kind of touched on a little bit was that the dress is the foundation. And this is something that you and I have talked about a little bit of. Um, so like, for example, my, when I am having an event where I am feeling stressed or um, like the example that I like to give is I went to my first networking event that had me, I've never been to one and I am definitely more on the introverted scale of life. So being in a really big group where I don't know anyone is like my super stress mode. I'm like nervous just thinking about it. <laughs> it's so hard, but that's something that I'm trying to grow and push myself for. So I went for this event, but in order for me to try to feel my best, to present my best self, I needed something that helped me feel really confident. And so for me, it's my black Emma, which is the black version of this dress, um, my red belt, it's just a skinny red belt, my red cuff and black heels. And like, if I, no joke, I actually texted my neighbor. I'm like, do you have a red lipstick? Cause I don't even have lipstick. <laughs> but I did, I was like, I just need a red lipstick and I'm terrible at choosing color and I clearly don't own lipstick. So. <laughs> So yeah, that was, that's my go-to outfit when I am trying to feel my best and to feel confident. I think having that, the dresses as that foundation is so important, especially to try to present your best self. Right. Oh, I love that. I mean, because it, I think the purpose of like dressing is just to like highlight the wearer. Like we don't want to wear clothes that draw attention to like necessarily just the clothes themselves. Like you're there showing up as Katie, a business owner and as a mother, like you are there to present like you and your work and your creativity and not to like just draw attention to the clothes. But I think the right clothes help us like feel more confident, almost like drawing attention to what we're there to present. So I love that, that thought of like, it's like a uniform where 
it's like, it makes you the best version of yourself. Yes. So it's not just clothing to like for fashion's sake, but it's clothing for like your life's like purpose. And it's just like that supporting uniform that I think does give us that, I almost think of clothing sometimes as like, it's our armor. Like it's what kind of makes us like feel like we're brave enough for whatever we have to do. Um, and I love that approach to fashion instead of just like for a brand or for whatever, it's like really just to highlight the wearer to make her feel beautiful so that she can go and then do whatever she's meant to be doing. I love that. And it's so true that, that literally, that mindset shift has been huge for me because, um, I literally for most of my high school years, I wore black and khaki, no joke. And it was not a good combination. <laughs> But like, I literally did not care. I hate shopping. And so for me to have to try to put something together, like in that sense of like fashion, I think that's more of like the, what people think of, like, I just, bleh. so the mindset shift of fashion for fashion's sake and following trends to what is it that makes me feel my best? Yes. What is some, how can I put something together that helps me feel more confident? So many people will uh, put on the wearable wallet for the first time and they literally like their shoulders come back. They stand yeah. straight. And they like almost like fight. Like I feel like a badass. It's like, <laughs> yes. yes, you're putting on that confidence and yes. it's not a bad thing. That confidence is really you showing up as the best version of yourself. Yes. yes I love it. And I love that you can like infuse like that mindset and that vision into a product because then it's so much more than just like this thing, but it's really an ideal that if you as a creator of it really believe it and live it yourself, like something can take on that, like just more significance to it of like this actually, like I actually believe like the right dress can change your life because if it affects how you present yourself and like what you feel up to, like that like has a ripple effect in your life. So I don't think it's crazy to think like, you know, a wallet or a thing, it does have the ability to change our lives. And if we're like a little bit fanatical about it, but like just enough to make it come to life, it's like, it is true. Like what we think, like what we think affects our life. So what we do and what we wear and what we just like how we identify it, those are all things that do shape who we are and then how we interact with the world around us. I completely agree with you. <laughs> Such kindred spirits, I love it. <laughs> we can't all be crazy, right? Right? No, that's what makes the world great. Because we all crazy people are more fun. Crazy. I. It's it's so funny because I I definitely notice in my own life because I'm not to get like super personal, but like I'm the kind of person where if I have like an event to go to and like I you know you try on half the things in your closet and like nothing fits, so you don't feel good. It's like, well, I'm just not gonna go because I don't feel like I I just like clothes for me have been always like I'm super tall and I try to dress more conservatively so it's always been such a struggle and I just have this I don't really know what my like my style is just kind of weird it's like it's hard to I, I'm very picky at what I like and what I don't like so but even like this past like a few days ago I was feeling kind of sick which is when you also just don't feel yes. great about anything and I was trying on like all these things for something and then I was like wait I'll just grab like the green Emma and I put it on I was like oh wait no I feel good I feel great. And like, I, like I tried on like a new outfit with it and it was just like, so often it is the green Emma for me, which is the green version of what you're wearing is what I reach for. And I'm just like, I feel good. Like, and it just like calms me down. It's, I'm, I don't know why I'm so like dependent on what I'm wearing. I hope it's not just like a vanity or ego thing, but like it really affects how I feel like confidence wise. And so often, and the green Emma or the Emma dress was the first one that I made really made for the company and that's I love all of them but for me that's the one that I I pull out the most because it's just consistently going to make me feel like I am now showing up to the world as who I wanted to be because of like this dress's identity it almost has like this little superpower to it that's like now I'm like who I want to be ready yes now I'm ready I'm like here I go yeah, I love that. And I love that, you know, you mentioned before about it being a uniform and it truly is that like, it's the staple, it's, it's solid. And this is what I go to right. when I need that extra boost to, to really believe in myself or to feel that confidence and to be able to show up yep. for others. Yep. My liquid eyeliner might be a mess, but if I can just have <laughs> the dress that makes me feel I might not be wearing lipstick. I might not know how to put on lipstick or choose one, but I am feeling good about myself. Got the dress. Yeah. 
Exactly. <laughs> so oh, I love it. Oh, I, we could like go for hours or days. Um, right. But I know that you are really busy. And so I want to be really respectful of your time. So where can people find you and find out more about these amazing, amazing dresses that you create? Okay. Well, and we didn't actually know that's when we scheduled this call, but this is actually um, kind of an exciting time. I don't know if you saw on Instagram last night, but um, I was dropping some hints about a kind of a, um, definitely the first time I've done this, but in the next, um, like probably the next two weeks or so, there is going to be, um, a dress sale, like no other dress sale in the history of our dress sales, <laughs> just as a thank you to people who have supported us. It'll just be like a 24 hour little window of time. Um, so, um, it's just fun timing because hopefully some of your um, followers will be able to get in on it. So yes. they can find us at, um, on Instagram is a good place. It's Virginia Dare Dress Co. And then um, from Instagram or from our website, they can also sign up to be on the early access list, which is um, the sale will run for 24 hours publicly. Um, but for people who are on the list, it's also opening an extra 24 hours early for them, for people who are just, um, opting in to get to shop it early, which will also mean that some styles will sell out that first day because I'm running low on some of the new styles. So if people want to get to shop it early, they can sign up there. Um, but finding us on Instagram or Facebook um, is a great first place. And then the website is virginiadaredressco.com. I love it. Oh, it's so exciting. Yeah, sales coming up, which is very, very exciting. I love it. Okay, everybody, you have got to go check out Virginia Dare Dress Company. I tell all y'all about that. And we didn't even talk about the best feature of the dresses. We got pockets. It should just be a requirement for all dresses to have pockets. Why? Why don't they? It's it's so key. The pockets are the pockets just make it for me. The pockets just Literally, that is how I found you guys. A friend, a mutual friend of ours, another wedding photographer, um, had shared your Kickstarter on her personal Facebook page. And literally, it was just like, dresses with pockets. And I'm like, done. Sold. <laughs> because feminine fashion is so stupid. They don't give us pockets. And they're like, useless. In weird places. It's always, yeah. You, fit a, you can fit a chapstick. Yeah, no, these are, these are pockets to, to fit your whole phone in. Sure. Yeah, like, these are legit pockets, y'all. <laughs> this is legit. Like, that is my entire hand in my pocket. And literally, you just need to have this because it's flipping amazing. Oh, I love it. Oh, and that's, like, part of the reason that makes the brand, just, I think, a little different from other fashion brands, too, is I, I don't have a ton of pieces out there because so much time and thought goes into like really creating each piece. Mm -hmm. So what's like a little different from other brands is like to make a new style, a lot of people will like draw, I mean, a lot of companies would like create the sketch and they turn it into a pattern and maybe they, they fit it like one size and then put it into production for like all the sizes. But I'm trying to just get like as not only like really high quality fabrics and like ethical manufacturing and like the good like feminine like styles, but fit to me is such a big thing because you can go to the it just it's so frustrating to shop in general and then if like half the things you try on like don't even fit well um so things like even like pocket placement or um just different fit issues we have like fit sessions where customers will like try on the clothes before they go into production and give feedback of like it's running a little small or it's like like this and that's something that we did from the beginning forward and it's amazing to see like how much like i still have to learn with like how we design and just taking everyone's feedback in. But I mean, the dresses have been tried on by like hundreds of people like to give their fit feedback. And so that's something that I hope to like, as we grow and grow, just to be able to continue like learning from people, even as we design. Like I recently did um, a, a preview, um, like preview try on event um, with like a new collection that was coming out. We narrowed down to like the top styles just from like what people were saying, like, like this, I would wear to this, but this seems like more versatile for this. And it's so cool just to like pull in that um, customer feedback because like there's no point in making stuff if people you know don't want it. Um, yeah, there's something somewhere I was going with that. Um, something about oh, but the, like things like pockets. It's just amazing how it's like if if brands would just listen to us and what we want, it would be so much nicer. But 
that's been fun. And actually, probably the thing I'm the most proud of with the company is our return rate for dresses is like a normal store. It's about 25% of things get returned for fit. Oh. Which is like, you know, not too surprising when you've like tried on stuff. And ours is at about 6% like five or six percent meaning of all things that ever get bought only about five percent get sent back because of fit issues or like that they want to like actually return it yeah we'll do like size exchanges sometimes but for like actual returns so that's something i'm like the most proud of because it takes a lot more time to develop clothes this way but if it means that people actually like them when they get them that's all that i could hope for <laughs> that's amazing that is that is huge that is awesome and you do have like a really great, um, I actually, I am part of that 5% because I ordered one dress and I'm like, Ooh, this unfit me. Cause again, uh, right. random, just straight waist. So that's when I ch exchanged out for the Emma and it was like the most easiest thing ever. <laughs> like, and literally I hate trying on clothes. I hate shopping. And so the whole experience for me from switching out the Samantha dress for the Emma was just so perfect. And so easy like everyone needs to get an emma dress <laughs> or just a dress doesn't have to be the emma just a dress well i i love it how you wear it especially with your with your cuffs whenever i see it i'm just like this girl's doing such cool things and Aww. i'm just so glad like i got to meet you because that's the best part of it all is getting to meet people like you and knowing about your business and your story and it's i feel like i'm gonna go and like get so much more done today just by getting to talk to you and hear about <gasps> Yay. I love it. I love, love, love it. Like this, I love collaborating with other makers because it is about collaboration and sharing and building each other up versus, I don't know, trying to like outdo each other. Like who's got time for that? I don't got time for that. <laughs> so awesome. Thank you so much for doing oh, this with me. You. This ah, has been so much fun. We're going to have to do it again. We're going to yeah, do it. Yeah. We're going to do it again because <laughs> everyone needs to know about this. So thanks so much for joining me and everyone. I will talk to you guys later. Bye for now. Bye.